Hi, angels. <laughs> Shopping, it's time. No, okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Rachel Cottom. I'm 15 years old and I've been in the Singing Angels for about five years now. My favorite memory of the Singing Angels was when we went to Venice, Italy. Um, we were in the square with a um, bunch of pi pigeons like um, we're <laughs> now. And um, I just remember riding through the um, on the canals and the Gondola, gondolas, it was, it was really an experience. Hi, I'm Marianne Dabzowski, I'm 10 years old. We're here in Poland. My favorite part of singing, of tour, is singing. We just came over there an hour ago. Now, tomorrow, we're going to sing over there. Hi, my name is Megan Lesser, and I'm 10 years old. I'm an alto, and my favorite part was going on the plane for the first time, having a pajama party, junk success, whatever you want to call it. All kinds of things. We even have a pillow fight. And it was really fun. My name is Allison Clancy. I'm 12 and I'm an alto. This is my first tour and it's been a great one so far. Uh, my favorite part of the 2000 tour was going to the bonfire um, a few nights ago and dancing um, and singing for the Polish people who also dance for us. My favorite part was the dancing. Hi, my name is Sheridan Shell. I'm a second soprano and I'm 11 years old. And my favorite part of this 2000 tour has been the shopping. I got these cool pair of shoes and this neat necklace. It's been great so far. So come on girls, let's go shopping. Hi, I'm Jessica Lachert and I'm, I've been a member of the Singing Angels for six years and I'm a second soprano. I'm 15 years old. My favorite Singing Angels memory is when we went to Canada because I didn't have that many friends and so many people made friends with me like just the first day and I feel like I have so many friends and I'm so close to so many people just from being in the Singing Angels. It's been such a great experience. Hello, I'm Ben Namzolski. I'm a bass in the Singing Angels. I'm 15 years old and we're here on our tour to Europe. Uh, my favorite part of this tour has been when we went to uh, a kielbasa roast right outside of Krakow. Uh, my favorite part of the kielbasa roast was when we were dancing with the native girls. Amanda, do you have a favorite part of this tour? Um, I'm Amanda Schmidt. I'm 14 years old and I'm a first friend. My favorite was probably also the kielbasa roast then because the music was amazing and actually roasting them over the fire. And the natives were so nice. You want to mark now? Well, first, I just want to talk about there's a jazz concert that's going to be coming up really soon. And would you come with me, Amanda? That's so sweet, but we have to go shopping first. Hi, I'm Ida Scheinemann, I'm an alto, I'm 15 years old, and currently we are in Wrocław, Poland. This is Lauren Wozniak, Vicky Sutek, and Caleb Hare. Look at what my mom got me before I got on the airplane. It's cute. It's an angel bear. This is a return gift. I got my mom. I got my mom a shirt from uh, Krakow. It's got uh, all the uh, churches, or yeah, a few the of them. Yeah, different sites of um, Krakow. And I'm basically wearing what I got. I got a necklace, a necklace, <laughs> a necklace, <laughs> and a necklace. <laughs> and then 
I got a ring. And I got two other stuff, some other stuff. I got jewelry and, well, I already said that. I got um, a bracelet and another amber necklace. And so basically, I went shopping for me. I didn't go shopping for anyone else. It's my philosophy, though. In Amsterdam, I got these really cool wooden shoes because I really wanted a pair, and they're authentic. And I got this keychain of a little guy and a girl dancing in costume. And here in Krakow, I got this t-shirt. And it has different places around Poland that you can go see different cities and buildings. And I got this handmade checkerboard here. And the pieces are inside. What I got, which beats all of you by far, is some special eggs. I got some very nice special eggs. And I got them from a special person on the side of a special road. And they're very special. They're all different colors. And I, um, I think I might give them to my little sister, Elizabeth, because she likes colors. She's a very colorful person because these are special and they're for a special person like her. the next two ladies and we're going to show them how to dry the clothes. <laughs> there we go. All wrung out and ready for drying. Now let's go dry it. Now that the shirt's all laid out nice and neatly, you need to stand up you need to get onto the shirt with your feet, those big heels of yours, and you need to jump up and down on top of it. All right, and this is how we dry the clothes. Keep doing it. I'll tell you when. It's good. It's good. All right. That's some good footwork. I gotta hand it to her. Great job. All right, next, 
All right, now, for all you people out there, um, another way to do this is to roll the shirt up in the towel, like so. Right, and to take exhibit A and beat it against the door. Beat it! Great job, ladies. Oh, gotta hand it to you. Sure, it smells great. I love it. Looks great. Feels great. Oh, wow. Polyester shirt. The best. All 50% cotton. Nice. Yep. This is a good night's work. And someone's sleeping. This mine only 192 feet underground. This mine is not deep, it has only 9 levels. The last one is situated only 1000 feet, it is 327 meters below the surface. And in some, we went down in the elevator, but in some places we'll be walking down by stairs, but always downstairs, never upstairs. Uh, we are going to finish on the third level of this mine, 405 feet below the surface. Today we are going to see less than 1% of this mine, because it has 200 miles of passages and 2,000 chambers. Please remember that smoking and using open flames in the mine are forbidden. Secondly, please do not touch any electricity if you don't want to be shocked. And thirdly, if you are as tall as me or taller, then please be careful and watch your heads because each group has only one helmet and this helmet is mine. One more thing. <laughs> The last announcement, <laughs> uh, there are many wooden doors, wooden doors, the wooden doors are air brakes, they separate different streams of air that ventilate the mine. So I open each one, then everyone holds the door one by one, and the last person is requested to close them. Of course, if you have any questions, you can interrupt and ask all the time, that's obvious. So, if you are able to understand me, I think that you can go. Thank 
pure salt is translucent. In our chambers, we are going to see much, much purer pieces of salt rock. And the air that we are breathing, because we are in a salt mine, also contains salt, and the air is very, very healthy in the mine. We have a As I told you, pure salt was translucent. Between this century and the previous one, two crystal caves were found in the mine, and they contained such crystals of salt. Some of them were one cubic meter big. So as you can see, pure salt is translucent. If it was exactly 100... but other things like tools, wood, food, even sometimes people or horses were transported down. It could raise a ton of salt on one line and it worked, of course, underground in the mine. the front gate when we used to welcome the kings coming by uh, Charlotte and uh, horses in a history member of our military knights heavy armors on the horses was big events in a history after the victory they offered the trophies medals of the soldier officer generals and this is the front gate of Lubomirsky with our lady of Chestova now they recently changed for mosaics instead of painting because winter is pretty strong here and so and the general view of the church tower we are renovating for the jubilee year because shrine is a stationary church when you get plenary indulgence after the prayers for the intention of holy father so again welcome and My name is Father Simon Stepanovich. I belong to the Poland Fathers and Brothers, President of Five Months. And I'm director of the English-speaking uh, groups, delegation, 
VIPs like you are today. I'm very happy meeting you and having you here at the shrine. What next question? Can you tell us the history of the Black Madonna? So this is the background of us on, on a, is a newly mosaic representing historical moment when Prince Ladis of the Polish brought the holy icon from Ukraine to the shrine and began this uh, pilgrimage center. We are having four or five million pilgrims a year from 92 countries. So the church is built uh, partially, every century was added something, like the, the chapel where you perform in front of the Holy Ark is Gothic style by Jagiellonian Vazakin, and then it was expanded 17th century and before the war, and Basilica was 16th, 17th century, and now we are renovating all around for the Jubilee year, including the church tower. Can you tell us how the Madonna got the splashes on your face? The, the Madonna, because good people visiting and praying, we receive blessing and living all kinds of gifts, like we saw around the walls, both the offerings. And uh, the first gifts, about 50 years after the picture was brought here, attracted the who side. Who side, there were heretics and there was also a rover, so from south of Poland, from Bohemia, Czechoslovakia. They took the picture, began to run away about one and a half mile and stripping silver frame jewelry, they slashed with the sword seriously damaged. And then King Kiageo, his wife, St. Queen Hedwig, ordered to repair the holy icon. They left the slashes, the scars, because when we suffer together with Mary, it has salvific meaning, like with Jesus. It's easier for us to live, because the suffering is in every, every country, every you know, human being is part of our life. Thank you very much. I'm ha happy having you here singing angels. And I imagine that the heaven will be blue. We are having a general view of the shrine with the outdoor altar for big masses celebration. Holy Father was here six times, the people get in front, but also many other occasions like a big feast, the assumption when we have walking pilgrim of the right, Bishop Cardinal will come, come celebrate the mass with the walking priests and sisters and nurses and seminarians and all people from all walk of life and they pray. So some like foreign tourists, pilgrims say, Father, I never saw so many people praying together, like 90 or 100,000 pilgrims. The same place and the same time, you know, this is the power, spiritual power. And then I invite, you know, singing angels from Cleveland, Ohio to perform next time. But you have to come for the big feast of Mary, the Assumption of Mary, 26th of August, Feast of Our Lady of Chestova, Nativity of Mary, or even July if it is uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Avenue across the town dedicated to Mary, the name was changed to Adolf Hitler Alley. Stalin Avenue now back to Mary after solidarity like Valesa. You see all what do you have on your head? <coughs> okay. I have on a head part of my habit, the dress. We used to have tone dress, shortcut. And we cover with this scalp cap, colloquial expression, but liturgical expression is zucchetto, like the Holy Father. <coughs> so now even we don't have the shortcut, but we still optional full dress that people like. And only when we are in Rome, the Vatican, we don't use this, or when the Holy Father is here, not competing with the Holy Father. Because he also using the white habit, like us, and the zucchetto. But there are several orders who are using the white habit. Dominican, of St. Norbert, Camel de Lances, and so on. We are like flowers, like you, you know, various colors and eyes. So, zucchetto, thank you very much. Okay, now I suggest we walk to see the view of the shrine and also treasury, more historical gifts. Among them will be another vestment from a clothes from the holy icon and the beautiful monster offered by Pope John XXIII. Final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May His ascended going to be to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, I can't
Danny's gonna pick a card. You can pick it out of the pile, and I'll turn around and we can show them. And then put it back in the pile. <laughs> <laughs> Akkreditierung bitte einmal ganz kurz haben zum Einscannen. Ja, Ticket. Mhm. Haben Sie auch eine Akkreditierung? My name is Christopher Davis. I'm an alto and I'm 11 years old. I we are just finished the class at the Slovak Republic. Um, my favorite part of the tour was the Amber Museum and the salt mine.
Hi, my name's Zachary Hilton, and I'm 11 years old, and I'm in the alto section. Well, we're here at the Polish Pavilion in the Expo 2000, and I'm having a blast. This is my first summer tour in the Singing Angels. Well, my favorite part of this tour was when I got to interact with different kinds of people, and when I got to exchange different gifts and share my music. I had a blast. Hi, my name is Mary Gluckel. I'm 14 years old and I'm an alto in the Singing Angels. I'm at the exhibition site for the country Moldova, which is a small country located between the Ukraine and Romania. It has a very small population also. Later on, we will be having a concert here. Hi, my name is Mark Linka, I'm in the Singing Angels, and right now I'm in Hanover, Germany at the World's Fair Expo 2000, and shortly we will be singing for the Slovakian Republic, and I'm really excited about it. This is a thrilling experience. Let's check it out.
my singing angels. As I listen to the sweet, clean sound of your voices, I realize that no plea for peace is stronger than that which comes from your lips, the sound of youth. Soon the world will be yours to enjoy, to manage, and to prepare for your children. Soon you will be challenged with forces that will strive to attack your innocence, your idealism, your love of man, even your love of God. If you face these corrosive elements and hold them all for good judgment, with wholesome discipline and a gentle spirit, then you will have a chance to retain peace on earth. Oh, sing on, my angels, and keep the peace that the good Lord placed in your soul. This is your key to happiness. Let nothing of earth abuse it. My generation, who are present custodians of the world, have not done too well, and yet not too badly. With all its agony and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world, especially in our beloved America. Think positive. Be more concerned with what you are for rather than what you are against. Sweeten your life with kindness. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and be yourself. And may your wish for peace on earth go winging through the atmosphere for all the troubled and agitated to hear and for all hopefully to heed. The Singing Angels motto is make music, make friends, make a difference. This motto can incorporate that music is a universal language for no matter what country you travel to. The music that an individual or group can play or sing can communicate through any language barriers just by using all your senses such as body movement, vocal expressions, and feelings when performing a musical score. Making friends is something that can last a lifetime. And by trying with the same angels, you can actually meet your pen pal. In person, you have witnessed this with Kayleen Pennington. Meeting her pen pal Martha in Poland along with the other angels too, this meeting can develop as a lifelong friendship. For example, our executive producer Charlene Duncan, a former Sing Angel alumni, met her Chinese pen pal Ailey Yu Hong in the summer of 1983 in Beijing, China. They have remained friends until this day. In fact, Eileen was one of her bridesmaids in her wedding just recently. That really proves that friendships last, Chris. It is wonderful to know that no matter what your ethnic background, race, or religion, the key to friendship is peace. William C. Baim Sr., our founding director, quoted this in the beginning of this show, and we have found it to be true since our travels. For all people can become one with music, and from this, a strong friendship can blossom into a lifelong international understanding amongst people in the world. Mallory, you know, the group is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, since its creation in 1964. Bill Baim Sr. founded the Singing Angels in order to encourage the singing and performing of good music amongst the youth of Northeastern Ohio. The first troop of angels was made up of 80 singers. Today, membership has blossomed into two choruses. With a combined total of nearly 300 members, the singing angels are made up of youth of ages 8 to 18 that represents every race, creed, social economic status. The singing angels pride themselves in providing a wide variety of choreographed vocal music that has gained them a high level of recognition in Northeastern Ohio and throughout the world. They have earned an impressive list of major accomplishments that include international concert tours to 29 countries, including China, Russia, Japan, and France. Now, Marianne, do not forget the command performances, including four appearances at the White House, the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, and performances for Pope John Paul II, and at the World's Fair Expo 2000 in Germany. This performance at the World's Fair was featured in our video, as you have seen. 
The United States was the only country not to have a booth at this World's Fair, but the Singing Angels did carry the American spirit with their gift of song at this new Millennium event in 2000. Now, do not let me forget other accomplishments of the Singing Angels, such as the civic performances, including the presidential and gubernatorial inaugurations, before visiting international heads of state at the Cleveland Bicentennial Celebration and our participation in the Pasadena Rose Bull Parade. Also, there was the numerous television specials and live performances with Bob Hope, Wayne Newton, Kenny Rogers, Pibu Bryson, Roberta Flack, Audrey Hepburn, and Celine Dion. Thanks, Ben. It is amazing that the Singing Angels are one of the first show choir examples in the United States, and they have had the chance to see and participate in all of these wonderful experiences. The Let There Be Peace on Earth with the Singing Angels show that you have just viewed was shot in the year 2000 at the start of the new millennium. Since that time, it has not been so easy to travel as freely as we once did in the past with all the hate, war, and terrorism that threatens the world today in the year 2004. We all have witnessed the September 11, 2001 attack on the United States of America of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Ever since this attack, our U.S. military has been fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq. Many people today around the world live in fear and do hope for peace. So our prayer, through the gift of song, hopefully can get this message out. The song and prayer alone, it cannot solve the world peace problem. But the United States of America can sustain their own peace with some of the America's finest, the armed forces. They include the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and veterans, in which these U.S. males and females risk or had risk their own lives every day so we can attain peace. Thank you to the Amherst veterans for coming out to the studio today to partake in our video for peace. In fact, Charlene Duncan, a former Singing Angel alumni, has a special poem for the founder, William C. Bang Sr. We will tell you what this group has meant to her and her angel family over the years. The Legend of the White Tennis Shoes. These white tennis shoes have walked for miles, walking on shiny varnished floors, rubber risers, and through mud. There have been many coats of white shoe polish applied to these sneakers. No matter where they have walked, they have walked with other white tennis shoes just the same. It never seemed to matter how much coats of shoe polish were applied to them. No shoe was ever exactly the same. But when these shoes joined together, they began a circle of friendship of music and hope. Who could ever guess that these reasonable white shoes with no designer labels, which were affordable to all who wore them, stood in the presence of presidents, media, and have traveled to foreign countries? The canvas and the stitches have no monetary value racial implications or disagreements, just a flat surface in which the canvas can be touched upon by every artist who wears them. Some other canvases have more tales to tell and have worn out along with the rubber soles, but the soles of the angels who wore them have only gone onto in steps, cushions in their shoes as they have aged. As these sophisticated tennis shoes went out into the world, they walked in a variety of paths, such as being parents, doctors, teachers, and a variety of other occupations, which require longer shoelaces than that of old white tennis shoes that were in smaller sizes of many years ago. So is I, one of those sneaker wearers who has worn out and grown out of my white polished tennis shoes. I want to thank the founder and the director for allowing me to paint my canvas by giving me the strength in numbers. My friendships, travels, and ties that have never come undone as I meet with other alumni who have danced down the same path and past with their white tennis shoes on. So remember, if your lace comes untied and you trip, you can always get back up and polish your canvas. So for it to be told in the legend of the white tennis shoes. Mr. Bain has seen thousands of feet, all different shapes, colors, and sizes, and all these heavenly tapping toe memories and non-blistering feet. We thank him for allowing our souls to be marked with wisdom and our hearts to be filled with music by a line of white tennis shoes who have marched before and after, and will continue in the legend of the white tennis shoes. Most of all, thank you, Mr. Bain, for starting this performing group. We have a sole idea of not forgetting the nation's elderly and promoting peace on earth. 
on a national basis through friendship. We also want to thank America's military men and women that have stood here by us today and have left a legend on society by marching in the past and present to keep peace prominent throughout our nation and world. Here is a classic war quote that includes the word peace, written by Benjamin Franklin. There never was a good war or a bad peace. The Singing Angels will continue to carry a tune for our U.S. troops, so please come home safe and carry the message of peace for all humankind always. We salute your bravery and kindness. We would like to thank the Amherst VFW Post 1662 for being in our studio today. Thank you, gentlemen. Dude. Now we will leave you with the lyrics written by Louis Armstrong named What a Wonderful World that the Singing Angels recorded at the Sumo Recording Studio in the year 2000. Thank you to our viewing audience for being our friends and remember that peace is what makes friendship possible.